Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our IB interview question series. We're going to carry on with another three statement impact question here. And we're, in particular, we're going to look at how gains and losses flow through the three financial statements. Uh, with that said, uh, I want to make a quick note before we dive in here. So, in this answer, uh, we're going to utilize a framework that was laid out in the first video in the series. If you haven't seen that video, I'd strongly recommend you go back and check it out before you dive in here. Uh, I will include a link to that video in the description down below. And with that, let's just hop in. So to start with, we need to cover just the fundamental impact of a sale of a particular item that's sitting on our balance sheet and how that in particular hits the income statement. So if we have a piece of PP&E, let's say a $100 factory sitting on our balance sheet and we sell it, if we sell that item for more than it's listed on our balance sheet, for, for more than the book value, we generate a gain. And if we sell below the book value, we generate a loss. And that loss or gain hits our income statement. So that's the kind of key thing to understand here. So with that said, let's assume that we sell for $150 and we have PP&E that is $100. In that case, we generate a $50 gain and as I was saying before, that gain goes to the income statement. Now, that gain is taxable, and we need, to, we need to calculate the tax impact of that particular gain. So we need to assume a tax rate if it's not given to you. And by the way, if they don't give you a tax rate in these questions, you're expected to ask them or to assume a tax rate, and I generally recommend 20%. Um, with that, let's jump into the actual answer. So we have the first step here, which is calculating the income statement impact. As we said, we have a gain of plus 50, which increases our taxable income here, uh, or in accounting terms or finance terms, profit before tax. Uh, so we're up 50 now. And we had assumed here a 20% tax rate. So we're going to have income tax expense of 20% of 50 or $10. And with that calculated, we can now move to net income. So plus 50 of profit before tax, negative 10 of income tax is a plus 40 impact to our net income. And with that, we've now completed step one of the exercise. Now we can carry this over to the cash flow statement to complete step two. The first item, as always, is cash flows from operations uh, in our cash flow statement. And the first item within CFO is net income. We just calculated an income impact, so we can carry that over, so plus 40. And we have depreciation and amortization that we could add back here and stock-based comp, but that's going to be zero because there's no uh, relevant depreciation and amortization or stock-based comp to capture. But we now have a non-cash charge that we really need to remove from cash flows from operations, and that is that gain that we uh, have over in our income statement. As we'll see, effectively what you do is you remove this from cash flows from operation and then incorporate the full dollar value of the sale in cash flows from investing. So let's remove the gain of 50. Let's write that out here. So negative 50 here. And uh, we have no change in networking capital that we need to adjust for here. So we'll just leave that there as zero. And our net impact to CFO here is 40 minus 50 or negative 10. Now, similar to the initial video, I'd like to quickly stop here and note that it isn't a coincidence that this is the output that we have, this negative 10. Effectively, what we're capturing here is the income impact of this transaction, which is negative 10 of incremental tax. Uh, so the net impact for these the kind of non-cash items isolated is really just or sorry, the net, the net impact of these non-cash items uh, in isolation in the cash flow from operations section is really just the tax impact of, of that particular item, in this case, $10 of taxes. So with that completed, we can carry down to CFO, or I'm sorry, CFI uh, next. And here's where we actually, let me actually just erase that. We'll make a proper section here. Here's where we record the sale of that particular item, which would be $150 cash inflow. And CFI then is complete, so we don't have any CapEx to consider for this problem. So plus 150. And we don't have any debt or equity items to deal with, so it is uh, zero for CFF. And so our change in cash 
at the bottom here. Let's move this down here. Our change in cash is now going to be 150 minus 10 or plus 140. And again, I want to stop there. So we've completed step two real quick. But I want to stop here and note that if you step back from the accounting and think about what we've just completed here, we made a sale for 150 here, and we have a $10 tax bill, and that's what's being reflected here is the 150 received less the $10 of taxes that we had to pay as a result of the transaction. Let's remove the little arrow uh, across the screen here, and now do step three, which is plugging net income and cat the change in cash to our balance sheet. So we'll plug in retained earnings here, which is just our net income of plus 40, and then we can move our change in cash here so to our cash balance, which is plus 140. Uh, let's zoom back out here for a sec and draw a little line. And now we have a, a set of adjustments that don't balance out, so we clearly need to fix that. And as always with this, this component, and really we could call this step four, it's not completed yet, but we're working on step four. Um, with this piece of it, step back and think about the fundamental nature of the transaction and you know what we're doing here well what do we do we sold a piece of equipment and collected net 140 dollars in cash well if we sold equipment that means let's zoom in a little bit our pp and e has to go down by the hundred dollar value that we sold um or the hundred dollar book value uh, reflecting the fact that we sold it is a better way of putting that and now if we look at this we have a net impact here of plus 40 on the asset side and the same thing on the liability side so now step four is fully completed and we've now answered the question um, stepping back from the kind of the bigger picture of all of this um, from all of this really the exercise here is first understanding that when you sell an item that's sitting in your balance sheet if you sell above book value it generates a gain and below book value it generates a loss that's the first thing. And then, then you need to implement the impact of that gain or loss in our income statement first and then flow it through. Um, the next thing to really capture here conceptually is in CFO, what we're doing with this particular event is unwinding the item really from our uh, CFO section and really just capturing the tax impact of that item and then incorporating the cash inflow in CFI and then kind of pulling it all together. Now, quick note here, if we were to go back and you know have a situation where we sold this for fifty dollars instead of you know one hundred and fifty, the gain that we recorded here would turn into a loss. It would be no longer a gain; it would be a loss, and everything kind of flips. So we'd have a negative uh, gain, and that would actually generate a tax benefit because it lowers our taxable income. And instead of subtracting a gain, we would add back the loss to reverse it. And you'd end up with a positive ten here in CFO. Um, so. That's that's how I'd recommend you answer these questions. Um, as is as as I say at the end of each of these videos, we have a lot more coming. Uh, hopefully, this helps you gain some clarity around how to answer these questions. Would love to hear any comments or questions you have down below in the comments section. Um, hopefully, this helpful, and look forward to talking to you all soon. Take care.